Morning guys, today I'm starting off with uh, doing a much needed service on the 33.4. I'm driving the car up onto the ramps right now. Um, after just Nico Circuit, Drift Missouri, obviously I need to do an oil change and filter change. Um, and then it's kind of like the end of drift season now here. So like all events stop generally during winter, um, just all the snow and things like that. It, it's probably gonna snow like crazy again here, which means, you know, I'm not gonna be able to drive the car. So pretty much doing a service and then the next time I'll be probably drifting this thing is actually gonna be like end of January, maybe February. So uh, kind of a little bit sad, but uh, you know, stuff you gotta do. So anyways, uh, let's get to it. Okay, so ready to pretty much smash this out. Got my oil filter, got my car tampon. If you don't know what a car tampon is, is here in Japan, they have these special box with like all this absorbing stuff in there. And that's where all your engine oil goes. You tie it off, box it up and just put it in the trash and they collect them. Like it's part of a service here. It's kind of pretty cool. So hence the name car tampon. And uh, this time around, we went with uh, some Wacos oil, Wacos oil. I don't know how we meant to pronounce that. Um, but anyways, it's a fully synthetic, uh, like racing oil. So it's pretty good for your car. Anyway, so I'm told, don't really care. <laughs> but anyways, as you guys know, relocated the filter and everything, which is now in behind the intercooler piping up the front here. You can probably just see it there. So to make my life easier, I'm just gonna take the front bar off. It's four zip ties, so it's super easy to do. And then uh, we'll pull the oil off, uh, filter off, drain it, everything out. And uh, we'll go from there. I took the car out for a bit of a test drive and uh, I had a bunch of orders to kind of like ship. Um, so I was at the Japan post office. Now every time I spend like over $100 shipping orders, they give me a little gift. And they're normally like these quirky kind of funny things, but this one tops like everything that they've ever given me. There's a little box like this and it's literally like in Japan, Ofuro means bath, but this is like a bath bomb for your bathtub and it's to emulate like uh, proper uh like hot springs and stuff like that puts all these minerals in the water like help for healing muscle pain and stuff like that um it's very common that a lot of people in japan every night when they have a bath they have one of these in there it's kind of like a bath bomb but actually has a genuine purpose uh, and they gave me one <laughs> i just think this is hilarious like you just don't see this kind of thing happen in australia and or anywhere else in the world i don't think so like because you imagine it like in the states like you know you go ship some stuff with usps and after you spend like a hundred dollars they're like oh hey here's a bath bomb for you to put in the bath when you go home. i don't know there's just these little things about japan that i absolutely love that you know you just don't experience anywhere else in the world so, it's, it's weird i know but anyways I'm gonna go get some McDonald's because I've been craving that for lunch for like the last few hours and that was the whole reason why I did my service like as soon as I could so that I could take the car for a drive and get a lunch. Anyways, let's do that. So it's a few days later now. I finished up at my job. I've now got a week off and I'm feeling super fresh, got a fresh haircut and just excited to enjoy this week off before I start my new job. Um, but in saying all of that, I actually have something really cool that I wanna show you. So this bad boy here is what I wanna show you. Now, right now, I've just got the protective cover on the touchscreen so it doesn't get damaged while I'm working on it and I had to pull all the backing covers off it um, while we were troubleshooting and seeing if we could get Twisted Cat 6 wire to work for the CAN bus network, which it doesn't. So that's why I'm fixing this today, gonna to get this working and show you guys how awesome it is. Um, but first things first is this is normally in a full case that you can put up in your cluster there. It's a full touchscreen, Raspberry Pi powered, um, digital dash for your car. And the best thing is, is it doesn't just work on CAN bus and link ECUs and aftermarket ECUs. It'll work with OBD2, uh, OBD1, I think as well. So it's really cool. Um, and the best thing is, is, is right now, I think this is still in prototype stage. These will be available on the market soon for everyone. Uh, if they already are not now, I'm not sure, but go check it out. Um, 
the I'll put a link down in the description to their Facebook page and website. It's called Power Tune, and the best thing about it is the price point on these is it's just really good. Um, the amount of money that you spend on a touchscreen digital dash these days is upwards in the thousands, and like this type of package here, I think they're aiming for around about like the $600 mark. So to be able to get something at like half the price of what you'd normally pay that has all the same features is just freaking awesome. So anyways, um, I'm gonna replace this cable, show you how I'm gonna hook it up to the CAN bus and get it working, show you guys it functioning. And uh, yeah, I'm just super pumped because I've always wanted a digital dash for my Link ECU and this is just awesome. Um, and yeah, anyways, let's get started. My wife's been complaining, saying that this chair's been super wiggly. And I just noticed that the bolts like backed out a little bit here on the chair, like, and I can tilt, move that by hand. That's ridiculous. All right, I'll tighten that as well so that next time I take her out for passenger runs, um, the chair's not all wobbly. <laughs> Okay, so I finished wiring in the new wire here um, with the plug that goes to the CAN bus plug on the Link ECU. Um, obviously, if you don't have a Link ECU, you've got something else, you can use CAN bus as well, or if you don't have CAN bus, you just use OBD2 and whatnot. Um, but what I did want to say is I do want to test this outside before I, you know, screw everything back together with the ECU and put that up in there and then find out like there's something wrong with this cable that I got for it as well. Um, which is what I learned with uh, the Ethernet Cat6 twisted pair here is that this just isn't enough for the CAN bus to work. So, um, and I think it has a lot to do with like the type of network kind of thing because CAN bus really is like a data stream network and uh, I don't want to get too complicated into it but if you don't have the right cable once you start like needing a couple meters of length and stuff if you don't have the right stuff it just won't work and transmit. So anyways I'm going to do that now. I'm going to just pretty much connect the end of this wire straight to the digital display, uh, plug the ECU, ECU back into the loom and start the engine and just make sure that everything's working. Okay so a little update now on the digital dash. I have been pretty much troubleshooting it for a while now there looks like there's a little bit of an issue there um, after a whole bunch of testing and troubleshooting it looks like the little um, CAN bus interface that plug is into the, plugs into the Raspberry Pi and the screen and everything uh, it looks like this is DOA um, so dead on arrival which is very unfortunate um, uh, I mean these things kind of happen it doesn't matter what you're doing in the world like whether you're building a computer and your graphics card just it turns out out of the box it's dead and it doesn't even work it looks like that's what's happened with this little CAN bus module um, so they're going to send me a new one to replace that luckily I know what I'm doing because uh, Raspberry Pis and product development and all this type of stuff is no stranger to me so I've been able to troubleshoot with them and uh, we've pretty much just been um, going through a whole bunch of stuff in the Linux operating system which uh, if you know Raspbian you know exactly what I'm talking about um, but yeah, it's it's been kind of fun because, um, you know, just going through and learning a little bit about the CAN bus here and how um, it's working on the um, Raspberry Pi has been quite interesting. Um, it's very interesting uh, if any of you guys are a little bit nerds, but it actually shows up as a uh, network device. Uh, hang on, let me just bring up network com config and then I need to go shift page up so we can see it so if you can see here uh, the can interface actually shows up here as a network um, interface which is kind of interesting so it's weird because the raspberry pi detects that this is here but this is not receiving or sending any data whatsoever um, and i've tested a whole bunch of different cables and things and stuff like that and yeah it, everything just stops at this thing so we think this thing is just dead on arrival so they're going to send me a new one anyways enough talking and geeking out about that type of stuff um, I don't really know what I'm going to do for the rest of the vlog today, so uh, I guess we might wrap things up here. Just really quickly guys, um, if any of you need any R33 parts, this box is completely full of interior parts like trunk and boot lining and everything like clusters. 
Um, I got a whole bunch of parts. I've got a whole heap outside as well. You saw everything I took from that 33. If you need anything, if I don't need it, I'll sell it to you for a really awesome price. Just DM me on Instagram. I'll ship it to you. I'll sort you out. I just need to get rid of some because there's just parts everywhere and I don't want to make the missus grumpy because I'm hoarding stuff. So help me out and I'll help you out.